you're taking away from this. So please, please do share. Once upon a time in a magical land, far, far away from here, there lived an ambitious young woman. And one day she happened upon the library and when she came to the library, she was shocked to see that the library was dilapidated and in desperate need of repair. She couldn't believe that people hadn't taken care of this library and she walked inside cautiously, you know, feeling every creak and crack in the floor, maneuvering past the cobwebs and the dusty shelves. And she was astonished to see that most of the library had been vacated. There was scarcely a piece of paper left, let alone a book. But then her eyes happened upon this one book that cover was tattered and torn and was on a shelf all by itself up high in the corner where none could scarcely see it. There was dust on this book and the edges were well, well worn and it looked and had that musty kind of smell. And it seemed that this book hadn't been read nor even touched for a number of years. So the ambitious young woman, curiosity getting the best of her, climbed up on top, reached cautiously up high and pulled the book off the shelf. She coughed as if she inhaled a huge thing of dust, as sometimes things up high on shelves are known to collect. And she wheezed as the dust entered in her nose, and she desperately tried to catch her breath because the dust and the amount of it was overwhelming. She brought the book down off the shelf and found a table and brushed away some dirt and cobwebs and chased away a few spiders and opened the book. And there she began to read. Now, what was remarkable about this book was it was in a language that she could not understand, nor did she have any sort of reference to decipher. It was, it was foreign to her tongue. But she kept on going because her curiosity was really calling to her. She wondered, why was this book the only book left in the shelf? Why was the book rarely, pretty much the only book left in the library? And as she read, she was going through and flipping through the pages and trying to see if she can recognize a word, perhaps. And then she came across this page in the book. And this page was different than the rest of them because inside this page within it there was a little scrawl and on this scrawl it was a language that she could understand and she read carefully and it said that the secret to turning turning rocks into gold lay on the beach and it said that on the beach in this 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 thing of outcropping or or place of pebbles, wherever the rocks accumulate on the beach, there would be one rock, there would be one pebble that would be different than the rest. I got a little tongue tied there. I was trying to overdo my vocabulary and I think I ran out of all my big words. <laughs> there would be a rock there that would be different, a pebble there that would be different than the rest. And this pebble had a magic power to it. And once you got this pebble, you could use the pebble to turn any other rock that it would touch into gold. Now the pebble didn't look anything different or didn't seem to be anything extraordinary than any of the other ones. It lay amongst the seas of thousands. And the only way you'd be able to tell that this was a magic pebble is that it would be warm to the touch where others would be cold. And so the ambitious young woman, she quickly packed up the book, grabbed the few possessions she had and made her way to the beach, fully committed to finding this magic pebble. Now, once she got down there, she was astonished to see that, not, not to her surprise, there literally were thousands, perhaps tens of thousands, maybe even millions of pebbles. How was she to find one, she thought. She devised a plan, very craftily, might I add, where she came up with the thought that if she were to pick the pebbles up and drop them back down where they lie, she would most likely pick it up again, prolonging her search. So her decision was to pick up the pebble, and once she decided it wasn't the magic pebble, cast it out into the sea, leaving one less pebble on the beach, which made her one step closer to finding the pebble she sought. She began picking up pebble, cold, throwing out into the ocean, picking up another, cold, throwing out into the ocean. She did this over and over again for hours, and then the hours turned into the days, and the days turned into multiple days, and the days turned into weeks. And still she had no pebbles. She did not have the pebbles she sought. Her back was sore, her knees ached, her face and body was badly sunburnt, but she persisted because she believed deep down that she would be able to find the pebble. And so she sat there, kept throwing the pebbles, the pebble into the ocean, pebble into the ocean, cold pebble, cold pebble, cold pebble, until one day she picked up the pebble that she sought. 
It was the warm one, and she realized it was warm right as she picked it up and cast it out into the sea. See, unbeknownst to her, she had picked up, she had formed such a habit of casting away pebbles, just doing it automatically, that she missed the opportunity when it came in front of her. The opportunity she shot, sought was there, but the habit around the opportunity may have cost her. She sat there on the beach, perplexed, unknowing what to do. And her only thought was, the moral of the story is. <laughs> what did you all think of that one? What is the moral of the story you take away? Oh no, I see some sad faces go by, <laughs> but I see more hearts. What is the moral of the story? What are you taking away from this? Did you enjoy this story? That was a tongue twister of language that I didn't know I would be able to pull off. I, I'm, actually, I guess if I were to pat myself on the back, I don't use most of those words on a day-to-day -day basis, and they were just popping up in my head, which is why I got really twisted on about what do pebbles and rocks lie in on a beach? Are they rock croppings? Are they in a little sandy special rock place? What are they in? What is the moral of the story? Anybody want to share? Yes, you want to share the moral of the story, Jen? Is that what that yes is for? Don't let an opportunity pass you by. I like that. Don't let an opportunity pass you by. What else? Who else has a moral of the story? The moral of the story. If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you always got. Oh, I like that. I like that. If you always do what you've always done, you will always get what you always have gotten. Great story. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you for listening to it. What else? Anybody else want to share their moral of the story? If not, I'll give you all another minute to type. And just as a reminder, there will be a Facebook Live tomorrow about 4, 4.15ish on the One Year 1000 Challenge page. There will be This will be a more formal one where we'll have some time for Q&A during it. And I will be, so I'll have time afterwards to answer questions. I will post a reminder shortly about what the topic's going to be on because I totally spaced on what the topic was. I wrote it down and then I left my notes. Move through life slowly and with intention. Oh, I love that one, Carly. Hello, how are you? Move through life slowly and with intention. I like that. Anybody else? Moral of the story. Oh, my thing just said low battery. I don't want this to shut off on me. So I better wrap it up because I don't want this to shut off and then it just leaves us here abruptly. Thank you so much everyone for joining in and spending time with me today for the moral of the story. I hope you